Hi traders, welcome to another video here at One of Trader. I've become very fond of the Gaussian channel because it has quite a logarithmic feel to it, uh, which can be really great, especially if you trend following or you're looking to take pullback trend uh, continuation trades. So let me show you an example of that real quick before we get into it. This is a weekly chart of the NASDAQ 100 futures. You can see how even in times of pullbacks, how the Gaussian channel still has this upward momentum, giving it that kind of logarithmic feel like I just explained. But let's go over a few things about the Gaussian channel that kind of gives it its strong reliability. It is an indicator that is modeled after Carl Friedrich Gauss, which was one of the greatest mathematicians of all time. Gauss did not have access to modern statistical software, but his statistical models have proved extremely powerful in interpreting price movements in markets. The Gaussian channel indicator is interpreted by using standard distribution models and a bell curve. And the Gaussian channel also tries to predict the direction of a price trend. So the main aspects of the Gaussian channel are of course the color of the bands, which is the most important, and the distance between the price and the bands. Now in this chart, there are many different settings we can actually use on the Gaussian channel. Uh, for example, if I double click on it and bring up the settings, if we go to style, I can color the bars, which means at any time we are trading below the Gaussian channel and we have it red, all of our bars are going to be colored red, even in the times where we have a green bar. That's just to signal that we're in a downtrend. Uh, personally, the way that I use the Gaussian channel is I don't need that. I'm only using it as a pullback entry kind of uh, system. The second aspect, of course, is going to be the distance at which the price is from the Gaussian channel. So let me go into a little bit of a longer term chart here. A lot of the time, if we see that the price is trading above the Gaussian channel um, for quite a long time and it's distancing itself from it more and more, here's a good example over here. Let me get the price range. We can see if I mark it just from here all the way up, we can see that we're trading 16% at this point. Let me zoom in. We're trading 16% above the Gaussian channel. So this could give us an indication that we are a little bit overbought, especially in the short term. All right, traders, I have the Gaussian channel up over here. It's on the T-Bond Futures four hourly chart. You'll notice that with the Gaussian channel, if you try to use it on anything lower than a four hourly chart, you're probably going to get some inconsistent results. And that's because of what I explained earlier. It uses a bell curve in its method of calculations. With this particular way of trading, we're actually going to be using the Gaussian channel as an area of support to buy into or an area of resistance to sell into if it's a downtrend. And that brings us on to three main characteristics that we must keep in mind when we trade using the Gaussian channel. The number one thing is going to be, of course, we want trending markets on the longer term time frames. If we see any markets that are sitting sideways, like this case over here, we want to try and avoid as much as possible those kind of market environments. And let me show you exactly how we can define this because of course we need specific rules in, in certain strategies in order for us to make sure that they can be as successful as possible in the long run. The first thing that we do is we wait for a breakout of the Gaussian channel. It can either be to the downside or the to the upside. It doesn't really matter. But in this case, we get a breakout to the upside. And we also see our first pullback, which comes into the Gaussian channel. Now, we would say most likely that, yes, this would be a great time to buy, but we actually skip the first entry. And the reason I do this is because I want to see the market break out of this previous high first. And once we do that, then I'm only waiting for price to, of course, break out and then retrace back into the Gaussian channel. This is giving me enough confirmation that we are starting a new uptrend. The first pullback can be a little bit risky because we're not 100% sure if the market is going to make a higher high from there. This now brings us on to the next point, which is a little bit tricky for a lot of day traders to kind of grasp. And the reason I say that is because we're not giving ourselves defined entries when we trade using the Gaussian channel system. As soon as we start trading around the area of the midline, okay, I can try and make that a bit smaller so you know exactly what I'm talking about. This is the time at which we begin to 
think about accumulating into our position. So in this case, I'm looking at a four hourly chart. I see that we've retraced back into the Gaussian channel. It's of course in a very strong uptrend it's moving upwards it's pointing upwards we've got it's green we've had a higher high this is the second higher high that we've made and this is our first or actually our second retracement which is the one that we're going to be looking at taking our trade into in this case then what i'll do is i'll drill down into a one hourly chart so let me just go back and find it for us and this is exactly what it looks like on the one hourly chart you'll remember on the four hourly we had the little pink circle showing us where the midline was but now what we watch for on the hourly is some sort of candlestick reversal or some sort of indication that this specific retracement on our four hourly is over and what I would most likely do in this case is I would wait to see some sort of candlestick formation that would indicate that uh, the selling is becoming weaker and that would be right here on this spinning top I wouldn't wait for a confirmation because I know that this is really, I'm just trying to catch the best trade I can on the hourly. The actual trade is being made on the four hourly. So on this particular spinning top, I would take my position long and then I would give myself quite a distance with the stop loss. Most of the time, what I find in this uh, system is I'm not actually looking for targets or stop losses. I'm just monitoring what the price action is doing at that point and using that to decide whether the Gaussian channel is going to continue moving upwards or if we're going to start moving sideways from here. And back onto the four hourly, I see that the entry would have been at this level. Let me draw a line across so we can see it specifically. What I'd be watching for in this case is I would start with just one contract. And this is why I recommend if you're trading this system or something similar, Going for the 150k on one of trader would be perfect because you've got $5,000 drawdown. So you have quite a lot of room to work with. And I would set a stop loss as a safety net just below the low of the previous swing low that we had, which would be around there. But I would be watching it very closely because of course, if we start seeing green candles, I'm going to be adjusting my risk more and more and more until the point where I'm at the low over here. But I don't actually know if this red candle is the low and I don't want to get stopped out too early. A lot of the time as day traders, we choke our trades, trades that would have been winners and we see them run in the direction that we originally chose for a very long time. We get taken out of because our stop losses are too tight. As we go forward, I then know based on the previous price action that on that swing high and this swing high, we kind of move above the Gaussian channel for if we measure it from the low to the high about 1.5% on that move and then about 2.5% on that move. So I could safely start saying that as we start moving up, I could begin accumulating more into this position because it's giving more and more confirmation that this market actually wants to break the previous high, which it does in this case. And maybe at the point we say we're trading here and I initiated my position with one contract, maybe at this point I'm in at about three contracts. I know that once we break above the Gaussian channel based off of the previous two impulse moves, we're looking at about one and a half to two percent before we start seeing a little bit of selling come in. At about one and a half percent, which would be around the previous all time highs, would be a perfect time to begin removing a little bit of size off of the position and then adjusting the stop loss. Let's take a look at a few more examples of how we can trade this Gaussian channel setup. I do have a four hourly chart open. It's still on the T-bond futures. When we're using the Gaussian channel on a longer term time frame, I'm looking at the channel as an area of support or resistance to begin entering into my position. I'm not trying to catch the top and I'm not trying to catch the bottom of the market, but I'm slowly adding to my position as I find the resistance being found inside of the zone. Here's the first example that I want to take a look at before we get this retracement back into the zone. We see that the market is clearly in a downtrend. Now I did say earlier on, we want to see the market push out of it and then go back into the Gaussian channel before breaking a previous low. And then we would start initiating our positions. The reason why we do not need to wait for it to move into the Gaussian channel first uh, in this example is because we are clearly in a downtrend. And even though we haven't moved into it, we've made lower lows all the way going down. So in fact, we've made three. And that's more than enough for me to think that we are in a clear downtrend at the moment. Before we actually move on with that example, let's take a look at what a losing trade would look like if we had to take it without those uh, criteria that I mentioned. 
So we get the first pullback and then we get the second impulse move up. But you can clearly see that we do not have enough buying pressure to push through that impulse move. And because of this, I will not be looking to take any entries at this area. Now, if we did move through, let's say we moved up to about this level and then the Gaussian channel was maybe trading around here, we could, of course, 100% start looking for long entries, but that's not what happens, which is why it's so important for us to let the first impulse move form, the first retracement form, and then to see if the market has enough power to break through that initial uh, impulse move. So we've got that confirmation occurring here. We've got the red channel um, as well. So we're in a clear downtrend. And this is our first retracement into the Gaussian channel. At this point, we would be looking exactly at this area as soon as it starts moving into the Gaussian channel to begin initiating a position. And right off the bat, the first thing that I would actually be looking for is where would I be able to place my stop losses initially of course, I'm going to begin dragging them down to reduce my risk, but where would I be able to start putting my stop loss so that I give myself enough chance for this market to actually move with me? Again, we're just using the channel as a place to accumulate. So the only really swing high that I could see that hasn't been taken out would be up here. And that actually would be the first place that I would be looking at placing my stop losses. I know that if we break through here, um, of course, it is a big losing trade in terms of points. But I know that if the price starts trading there, then I'm wrong and I'm just waiting for the next entry, which is why it's a good idea, in my opinion, to begin just entering into the position using just one contract at a time and waiting to see. For example, if we take an entry at, let's say, using this little um, box, let me make it a different color so we can see it. Uh, let's make it purple. If we make the, If we make our first entry in this little box over here, and then we wait maybe two, three days. And of course, because we swing trading, we're waiting a little bit longer and we see that we got this consolidation form. I could say in the next three or four days after this consolidation is forming, it's telling me that we are seeing some selling pressure come in and the Gaussian channel is actually acting as resistance, which is a very good sign here. And in that case, I may begin adding maybe one or even two more contracts depending on the consolidation time and how long the market is actually going to sit in the Gaussian channel for. Another time could be around this level to enter in, and maybe I'd be short about two or three contracts at this point. But of course, shorting and adding more to the position means I need to begin reducing my risk. And this is all going to depend on how much you're willing to risk per trade. In my case, I wouldn't mind losing, if I've got the 150K account, I'm trading $5,000 worth of drawdown. I wouldn't actually mind at this point, risking about one and a half thousand dollars per trade. And that's only because I'm taking very few trades, if maybe once per week. But, you know, in the long run, I know that that's going to be beneficial to me. Another thing that I would do as soon as we move into this Gaussian channel. OK, so let's imagine um, let me get an arrow and we can know exactly where we are on the four hourly. So that's the first time we start moving into the channel itself. I would grind down immediately into a one hourly chart. Let me just set that and we can find exactly where we are. And there we go. So I know that on the four hourly chart, this is about where we're trading. And this is exactly going to be the time where I'm going to try and see if I can find the best trade possible using a candlestick formation or maybe a double top or something using the hourly. But most of the time, I'm not going to try and be you know too cute on it. I'm just going to look for a specific candlestick formation that's bearish and let's go each candle at a time and let's see so this one you know we don't really have any type of bearish formation here on the next one either or this one or this one now this is the the very high i would enter in on this red candle at this point because this is a very big bearish candle bearish engulfer of the previous candle i know that this is only on an hourly chart it seems that this kind of time of course is going to be less volume but you could see that this almost looks like an evening star pattern and that's perfect for me to initiate my short entry and i would kind of watch the hourly chart for a few more days from here to see if there are any more signals that i could take but of course again at this point i don't even know if i'm correct yet on the trade so I'm looking at it and I'm just waiting to see if we get some sort of consolidation. And especially in this period of consolidation, since we are struggling to break above this high, it's a very good sign because as soon as we try to break above it, we find resistance off of it and we start selling off, selling off. So uh, another time that I could begin entering into one more position, I would probably, in this case, depending on the risk, because I would not want to risk more than $1,500 on the trade, I would probably enter into one more trade when I see here as a false break or at this point where it's a false break above this high. And then 
I would, once I'm happy with my position, I'd go back to the four hourly chart and I would adjust my risk a little bit to see, you know, I don't want to be putting in too much on the table that I can't afford to lose. Now let's assume that we are trading at this point. We see this big red candle. We know that we've had a consolidation period and now we break into the downside, which because of our short positions is a very, very good sign. And that's why in this point, it can be very tempting for us to take profit because most likely, well, let's just take, let's just take a look. We would have initiated our first position on the 29th of March and we only see the breakout on the 5th of April. So in this case, we're waiting an entire trading week before we actually start seeing profits. That's why traders, it's so important for us to be objective when we're looking at the markets. In this case, everything inside of you is going to tell you to take that profit because you've been in a position for over a week. You've seen no profits. In, it's been consolidating. But if you're trading from the mind and you're being logical and reasonable in your trading and you're not letting your emotions get involved, then you're not going to be closing any profits um, on this red candle because you see that it's the first breakout. And that's why it's also important to know how to do your trend analysis, how to read markets and to kind of get a feel for what the trend is like. In the previous example, we saw how the market was moving up and down in a very strong wave-like motion, whereas this is just kind of a very, very consistent, strong downtrend. And you could even argue that pullbacks are kind of just consolidation periods. They're not even real strong pullbacks. The first thing I would do when I see this breakout is I would go immediately to break even. And this means that I've got no more risk on the table. And I know that if we do end up moving below this and then bouncing back up it's a false break and yes maybe we're going to find a bit more resistance in the gorgian channel and fall off but um, in my opinion it's a lot better to save your capital than to put on unnecessary risk if you really want to give it a bit more room i guess you could just move it above the swing high over there which would be fine too from here what i would do is i would measure the initial downward move at the start of the red point of the Gaussian channel and then just kind of extend that down as a rough point of you know an area where I could look to target to get out of the position you can see that we kind of move into that and of course this is a bread and butter trade we kind of nitpicking the perfect trade that we can find but you get the idea of what we're looking for once you start seeing the profit in your favor you start seeing maybe three or four times your risk um, as unrealized profit, you could start shaving off a little bit of profit here and there. So if you see it move down to this area, you could take one contract off. If it moves down to there, you could take another one off. And also just keep in mind that the further down you move away from the Gaussian channel, the longer it's going to be in an oversold kind of area. And that means that there's a highly a higher chance that we're going to bounce in the short term. And that moves us on to actually in the same trend, there's another entry that we could have taken. And I'm going to clean the chart again. And that entry would be into this retracement over here. The first point that we're going to be looking at again is going to be right here on this green candle. As soon as we see that, I'm moving down into my hourly chart. And now we are trying to find it on the hourly and we're looking for some sort of candlestick formation that's going to give me confirmation to begin entering into the market. The first candle that I actually see when it breaks through, the next one is a very strong red candle with a spinning top next to it. So I would have taken this short trade over here and I would have initiated the position with one contract. You can see now how important it is to begin initiating a position with just one contract at a time and waiting to see what the market does. In this case, we could have easily taken our first position here. If we had gone all in with four or five contracts at this point, expecting it to catch the top and then, you know, falling off right there, seeing profits right away, we would have probably get stopped out because we see the market rally against us for some time before it begins moving in our direction again. So to begin initiating a position with just one contract at a time and giving it a little bit of days or so to, to see if you're actually correct on the position and then deciding on whether to add to it or not is, can be extremely beneficial using this type of strategy. And going back to the four hourly chart now, I've marked off this area, which is the most recent swing high that we have. And I know that I would want to put my stop losses above this area. And even though we get very close there, I would actually be placing my stop initially around this area. I would want to give myself a bit of room because I know how many times the market can retrace out of the Gaussian channel and then move again with the initial direction. Now, traders, take a look at this as well now. After we take this trade, I want to show you the next retracement that we would have received. Another potential time to start entering into the market and why it's so important to just start with one contract at a time and see. And also why it's so important to be patient. 
so let's just say that after this retracement, we probably, if we took these two trades, we would have made enough and we probably would have wanted to wait for some sort of sideways action before we began taking another trade. But let's say that we did take this position around here. And I'm going to put a red line across to show exactly where we could have initiated a position. You can see that even though we have initially been incorrect in our decision, and we see that the market has traded against us for quite a bit of time, but it's consolidated, as long as we are giving ourselves a little bit of room with our stop loss, even if it's just on the previous high, which is this area, as long as we patient and we are good with our risk management, and we're not being emotional and we are objective when we look at the charts, you can see how many times these trades reverse again and end up being profitable for us.